President Biden is on his way back to the U.S. after a visit to the Middle East, and everyone is talking about that cozy, possibly calculated relationship that Biden tried to show with the Saudis from standing next to the crown prince in the class photo to fist bumping him when he arrived and kicked off meetings with the Saudi leaders. The White House claiming earlier this week Biden wouldn't shake any hands because of COVID. Well, apparently that went out the window when Biden touched down in Israel and this fist bump, speaking of touching, even looks worse than a handshake. The CEO of The Washington Post calling it, quote, shameful and that it, quote, projected a level of intimacy and comfort that delivers to MBS the unwarranted redemption he has been desperately seeking. And even though President Biden claimed after the meetings with the Saudis yesterday that gas prices would actually fall in the coming weeks, if you believed that, the Saudis say that's not exactly how the meeting went. So oil production specifically wasn't discussed at this summit. I know it wasn't really a subject uh, for this summit. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, the president had told reporters in Saudi Arabia on Friday that basically they were going to be talking about this, number one, Laura, and that, in fact, our gas prices would come down. And that was actually his plan A on how he was going to attack our massive gas prices here in this country. So plan A has failed, and I'm not even sure they even talked about it. So then what was the point of the meeting? Uh, great question. Actually, I think the Saudis said we didn't even talk no. about that. Oil really didn't come up. So, yeah, what was the point? of going over there. And it's funny that you reference that as his plan A. How about plan A being, I don't know, maybe let's make America energy independent yes. again. Maybe open up our pipelines, allow drilling on federal lands. I don't know, just a shot in the dark there. But this whole trip, I think, was, was so embarrassing from start to finish for so many reasons. You have the Saudis basically contradicting the president of the United States, him fist bumping after calling them a pariah. Um, it, all of it just seems so messy and so unnecessary. And then I think back to when my father-in-law visited Saudi Arabia in 2017, and what a difference, I think, mm -hmm. in the two trips just felt really sad for America. Could you imagine, though, if this was the former president actually oh. fist bumping with the crown prince who's responsible and is a killer of a Washington Post columnist? And, like, are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, and he, if he had said, I'm going to hold them accountable, and then you come in, and, and right, Leo, it's very oh, friendly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fist bump. Like, we could fist oh, bump because right. we're friends. We're friends. We're However, good friends. Well, watch out for COVID, guys. Oh, oh, because yeah. he said he wasn't going to shake But hands. let me tell you what's amazing. He, he, he went 10,000 miles to get oil. Didn't get any. He, there's oil in Oklahoma, in Texas. He could have stayed right here. But Good what point. is so embarrassing is that he went over there at the time that the consumer price index came out. If you notice that, yeah. that was all time because he didn't want to be in this country because the country is in a disaster shape ever since he took over office. And I'll tell you one other thing that's also interesting. He is so timid, weak. Did you see how he read that document when he was reading, he was like, this. I, he wanted to make sure he read. He didn't even look at the camera. He kept his head down. We have a weak president who's not capable of running the most powerful country on the planet. Now, when I read and look down, I pull on my reading glasses, so I'm going to do that now. Right. Um, I have a pretty little graphic that I had them made up. It's called the Biden back and forth because I actually <laughs> think I should coin it a song. Um, President Biden had promised during his 2020 uh, presidential campaign to make the Saudi government pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. Remember that? OK. Also, Biden then agrees to meet Saudi Crown Prince bin Salman with a warm gesture. Of course, that turned into a fist bump. And then the CIA, of course, Charlie, has confirmed that the crown prince actually ordered the brutal murder of Kasha, uh, Kas, uh, I'm sorry, Jamal Kashogi. Khashoggi. Thank you very much. Um, in, and, and yet the president is still meeting with the murderer who's responsible for killing an American for doing his job, being a journalist. Yeah, no, it, it, it is a it's disaster. Disgusting. It's a disaster on every level. Yeah. Even if you take his set of priorities of what, you know, what his stated desire uh, desired outcome of his policies, whether it's standing up for the honor and integrity of Jamal Sh Khashoggi, yep. a better environment, a cleaner environment, or turning the Saudis into a pariah. He has failed at all three. Just out in the open, he's failed at all three. And it's a reminder, talking about your, your father-in-law, it's a reminder. You know, the, the beautiful thing about having an, an America first mm -hmm. agenda where, where a, a strong America is better, not only for America, but for the rest of yes. the world. world. It also brings so much clarity to both our allies and even our enemies. 
And uh, there, I don't, I don't think anybody in the world today has right. any clarity from this administration, yep. except that they can take advantage. No, of No, I Joe think that's Biden. a great point. Yeah. And when it comes to clarity and transparency, which, by the way, the former president was the most transparent. Sometimes a little too transparent. Say, I know. I, I freaking <laughs> loved it. But I, I will say this. Okay, so when the president comes out and says this about gas prices coming down, you know Americans are listening because he's going to say they're going to come down in coming weeks. They're all like, "Oh, yay, we can plan our summer vacations." This is the false promise that came from. From the president watch we had a good d d discussion on ensuring global energy security and adequate oil supplies to support global economic growth and that will begin shortly i'm and uh, and i'm doing all i can to increase the supply for the united states of america which i expect to happen the saudis share that urgency and based on our discussions today i expect we'll see further steps in the coming weeks okay. can, I, can i just say this that, that's a, that was a lie. That was outright untrue. And I'll tell you right now, we were energy independent under the Trump administration, and this guy went to, to the Middle East to beg for oil when we have natural reserves here that can resolve our energy problem right yeah. now. But he went over there begging for oil. Well, and not only that, they can't even... This is the, the world's largest oil producer. And the president himself, um, when Canadian president whispered in his ear a couple weeks ago that, oh, they're not going to have enough oil <laughs> for the entire world. And the president actually seemed surprised. They're not going to be able... They may get to 13... Uh, is it million? 13 million barrels 13 million day. barrels a day. And that's barely squeaking by. So what was he thinking? Uh, there are so many questions on so many fronts with this entire trip. And I don't know, I, I just think back to, you, you know, I watch that clip and all I see is weakness. All yeah. I see, I mean, there's nothing to do with strength happening there. And then I think back to my father-in-law and, you know, he got criticized, obviously, every opportunity anybody in the press had to criticize him. He was a businessman, though. And I think about how masterful he was with negotiations, the strength he had and the ability he had to read people, right? So whether we're talking about Saudi Arabia, whether we're talking about China, North Korea, even our UN allies, yeah. think about the way my father-in-law stood up to them and, and he was very clear yeah. in what he wanted to have happen. And now it's just murky and sad and depressing. And Charlie, you're exactly right. Yep. When America is stronger, the world is yeah. stronger. A weak America is awful for the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah even adversaries like, uh, and, and I know we're going to get more into this later in the show, talking about the, uh, the, the, the broken border, but even with Mexico, right. you know, when, when you lay out the, the and, and of course, Trump was mercilessly uh, ridiculed for this by both Democrats and Republicans, when you lay out the objective, this is what's best for us, let us find a way to do something that's good for you, and then you help us. It works out really well. Yeah. And obviously, he didn't solve the much larger problem of, of illegal immigration, but he did solve the acute crisis at that time. And, of course, out of spite, just nothing but political spite, yeah. Joe Biden went in there and undid all of it. And, and you know why? We're, we're the, paying the price. The difference is very simple. Trump put America first. Yep. Biden is putting America last. Yep. He wants to be friends with everybody at the expense of the American public. Yeah. I mean, I, I, first of all, I, I just want to play some sound about how the kingdom basically admitted to the world that we were naive. I'm not sure. Or did we lie? I'm not really sure as far as how much oil production is out there, how much we're leaning on Saudi Arabia, and why in the world would they want to help the United States anyway? Can we play that sound? The kingdom will play its role in this era as it announced to increase the level of maximum sustainable production capacity to more than 13 million barrels. Beyond that, the kingdom will not have any further production capacity. I mean, okay, that is an alarming uh, statement coming from Saudi Arabia, considering the president himself actually believed differently. Who is advising the president what? that they do have enough oil? I mean, honestly. I, and doesn't it seem like such a slap in the face for them to then wait for the president of the United States to get over there and then yes. to hear them it's say so this in front of his face? And my question is, the whole reason that we're even going over there, apparently to not ask Saudi Arabia to right. produce more oil, but nonetheless, the goal is more oil, is that Joe Biden is on this green energy agenda, right? Why is it better for the environment to drill over in Saudi Arabia versus here in America, where actually the regulations here in America give oh, us cleaner point. oil, yeah. right? Point. Like, all of it is just nonsense. If it's bad over there, it's bad over here. Yeah. If it's good, like, none of it makes any sense. So I don't know. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And here's the problem. Joe Biden is being basically controlled by the progressive left. This is the Bernie Sanders, the John Kerry, the Green New Deal promo yep. that he's running. He's not yeah. speaking for himself. He's speaking for the new Green Deal.
Uh, I want to play some sound from the president laughing off a question about um, the fist bump because, uh. I mean, he was asked about it. <laughs> Clearly, we're all wondering why, because he was afraid to get COVID. He wouldn't shake hands, and now he's fist bumping a murderer. Um, let's play that tape. You're coming under a lot of fire for your fist bump with the crown prince. Why? <laughs> I just wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. But also, how can you be sure that another incident, another murder like Jamal Khashoggi's won't happen again? Well, God love you. What a silly question. How could I possibly be sure of any of that? I just made it clear. If anything occurs like that again, they'll get that response and much more. God love you. It's, the, it's a laughable disconnect. What? It makes no sense. Yeah. And, th and that's what's reflecting in the polls right now. You fist pump friends. Fist pump friends? There not enemies, Joe. Not right. enemies. No. Uh, I, I, I mean, when you saw that just now, I mean, what, what was your initial gut reaction? Well, to the president or the fist bump? I mean, uh, they look like best friends, and then he just takes it off. Reacting to reporter. He has no idea. It, it's embarrassing. Bless his heart. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.